Hey everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Anchor Watch. Josh, this is this is a first. Well, th this is a. Uh... You could probably see in the reflection in my mirror. It's usually nighttime in my office, and we're in the middle of the afternoon here because we had to work around a schedule to talk with someone who's in their late night where we usually are. So yeah, so I mean, so it's basically like this person is here with us at our show, the normal time we would do our show, just where they are. Yeah, yeah. And okay, they, people probably <laughs> already know from the title who it is, but. I just, Jason, before we bring him on, I just want to say like, you know, over a year of watching the show, all the iterations of Below Deck, every once in a while, like you just, someone comes on screen and I don't know, certain people just, you're kind of like, I like that person. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like being at a party and just certain people click and you're like, oh, I want to hang out with them and talk with them or whatever. And our guest today is definitely one of those people who I think from the very first episode, you and I were just like, yep. Yeah. We would. Probably be friends with him. We would probably hang out with him. I would love to get to know him. And we have an opportunity today. So I'm really looking forward to it. We have an opportunity today. And, and he came in at a time where it was like, we're watching the show. We're watching all of the, the chaos. And it's like he came in and like made it bright again. So without <laughs> further ado, let's, let's bring uh, Tyler up today from Below Deck Season 10. Tyler, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm actually excited to chat to you guys and just get to know you as well. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. And Tyler, well, I mentioned it's 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 late night where you are. You want to share with everyone where you're at right now? Yeah, I'm at home in South Africa in my tiny, tiny little town. Um, it's kind of like 10 p.m., so late night for me. Nice. Yeah. Tyler, well, thank I, you. Thanks for we, taking the time. Yeah, really, we do appreciate this. Sure. This is great. You know, Adam is the one who gets the guests usually, but now I'm, I'm so glad that we have we actually have some guests. Listen, um, how – from where you are in your in your town, like you just said, how do you go from from that to the yachting industry to being on a huge international show, the most watched show on Bravo, by the way? How does how does that happen? Can you give us a little yeah. background about yourself? Yeah, so I mean, I I grew up in like a, a boarding school. I went to the same school for my entire life, and when I left high school, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be involved in media and production, and I actually wanted to study film and television production at USC. Um, I mean, in, in California, you guys know where that yeah, is. Yeah, of course, yeah. And um, look, as a foreign student, especially coming from South Africa, where our currency is incredibly weak, um, obviously it's super expensive. So I joined yachting as kind of like a gap year and means to pay for that. And then I just kind of, started to enjoy myself and stayed a little bit longer than I probably should have. <laughs> and um, then I was approached to do the show and um, I didn't immediately like go into interviewing for it. Um, the opportunity then came up again about a year later. And I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I'm ready for this now. And interviewed, got the position and I was just sitting patiently waiting to show up on the show. Wow. So Tyler, what you, you like, but you went through a lot there. I want to ask you like, so you mentioned like, you know, you start off with this idea of doing yachting as a gap year, but like, I, you know, how did yachting come up? Like I wouldn't have even thought of going into yachting out of high school. Like, was there someone you knew who introduced you to it or like, how did that get on your radar? Yeah. So um, in my small town of all places, we had a family friend who was doing it who had left school the year before me and gone straight into it. And I saw that, heard about all the money I could make. Um, look, I had very high expectations when I joined the yachting. I thought I was going to be making millions. Um, <laughs> that is not the case, just so everybody knows that. Um, but yeah, so we got in touch. And then, you know, you have to do your basic safety courses and either training, all that kind of stuff. And I actually went into yachting as a deckhand as well and then moved to deck stew, then moved fully onto the interior. Um, before the show, I was actually second stew, and then went back onto the show as as deck stew, but um, I'm sure everybody saw I didn't really spend even a day on deck. Well, it seems like you didn't need to. Now, you, you mentioned that uh, they approached you for the show before. What were some of your hesitations that you didn't want to jump yeah. on that right away? Good point. You know what? Some people, like... 
they love, oh my God, I'm going to be on this show. I'm going to go. But it seems like maybe you thought about it. And what were, what were those, some of those thoughts? Yeah. So, I mean, in yachting as an industry, there is a stigma around below deck that um, people who go on there aren't serious about their jobs and like mostly negative stigma attached to that. So I was a bit nervous. Everybody's got the idea that you won't get a job in yachting after you've done the show. Um, that's obviously not true. I've had jobs since the show. And um, I think it, you know, some people may not get jobs after the show, but that's more because of how they act and how they represent themselves on the show, as opposed to, I feel like I represent myself pretty well. Um, you know, I'm a hard worker and I, I, I showed that and I still had a little bit of fun. Um, I did things that you probably wouldn't be able to do <laughs> on a regular boat. Um, but, you know, so being on the show, there's a bit of leniency and I think people understand that. Yeah, I, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. If I, if I were watching the show and I was hiring people, there's definitely people like yourself where I'd go, oh, wow, very skilled, very competent. I actually wouldn't mind and, and has a great personality. Yeah, I would love to have them on board. There's definitely some, and we don't have to go into it, but there's definitely some, <laughs> like, oh, that person's a monster. <laughs> I will still steer clear of them. If anything, yeah. thank you, show, for giving me you know some insight into who they are before I brought yeah, them exactly. on. Um, yeah, that's great. So um, you had mentioned you know some people were afraid of not working afterwards in the industry. Like, so have you continued to work in the industry after the show? Like, what sort of life after Below Deck? Um, what's that been like for you? Yeah, so I I took I suppose you could call it a sabbatical after the show. Um, sure. Just took some time off, spent a lot of time at home. Uh, I mean, we wrapped up filming in April, so I came home. Um, it was kind of like winterish at the time. Um, came home to a family wedding, spent a lot of time with my family around here, and then went back to a previous boat that I've been on for multiple years, and I've just been going back there as as temporary work. Um, I think now I'm kind of ready to get back into the swing of things and maybe get a permanent job or at least an extended um, like seasonal job. So, yeah, nice. I think I've definitely had enough time off over the past. I probably worked maybe like five months over the past year. Yeah, that, well, I, mean, I, I, I think that makes sense. I mean, especially after that kind of experience, I, I would probably want a little bit of time to decompress because it's we've talked to others who've done the show and, and something they point out that the, you know, the viewers don't see is there's a whole other boat next to you guys with like a crew of 60 people or something. So it's not like yeah. it's just the 12 of you on a yacht with some guests. It's a high pressure environment, it sounds like. And that's the thing. It's, it's also really high energy, right? There's obviously, there's so many camera crew around. There's so many production team, plus the people you're working with and the guests. So I think after doing that, so intensely for the couple of weeks that I was there and then going back to normal life, it felt like such an anticlimax. So I did go through a period where I was like, I don't really know what's going on. I felt very like alone and kind of like dead inside for a bit, which is horrible, but <laughs> I'm fine now. Um, but yeah, there, there's definitely, there's a come down, I suppose, from the high of doing the show that I don't yeah. think a lot of people realize. Tyler, and, uh, Jason and I kind of went through something similar. We and other friends of ours. So we were in entertainment before and we yeah. were touring. And that is something that's um, really helps us feel empathetic to the whole show because we know what it's like to live with the people you're working with. Yeah. And yeah. essentially, I mean, you guys are doing the same thing, essentially entertaining people. And you go backstage and you have your, your moments to talk and then you're back <laughs> smiles on and let's entertain yeah. and then you go backstage and you're like fighting each other and stuff like we've we've both been in that situation but what you mentioned is you know i kind of compared it to my friends it's like when a space shuttle goes out and is flying amongst the stars when it comes back to earth it has to go through a lot of friction there's a lot of fire yeah. literally on the ship and stuff and it's like there is this moment of coming back down to earth where you do feel a little lost for a little bit and almost like a depression if you i think everyone i know who's come out of entertainment and kind of now landed in the real world if you will kind of went through that yeah time yeah I, I, funny, I, I, my real world is even yachting as well which isn't much of a real world it's it's very much glamorized <laughs> as well so we're coming, coming back home instead of going on to a different yacht which really like 
quite an adjustment for me. Yeah, I, it's it's very I mean, it's very work hard, play hard, just like kind of the showbiz industry. Yeah. It's, you know, like you you want to let loose that you you need to, like, take the time to decompress. Like you said, we saw a lot of work hard, play hard from you this season. More so the work hard. I've never seen anyone love the laundry room as much as you. And, <laughs> and we know that's a very important, if not the most important place on the on the boat, if it's not you know, the, the galley with the chef, it's probably the yeah. person doing laundry. These are the things you need, but like going into this, this crew who had already been filming, um, who had already gone through conflict and, and some chaos before you got there, yeah. what was the energy like stepping into that? And by the end of your experience, how did it change? It was, I mean, from even before stepping onto the boat, when I was just kind of sitting in the hotel waiting for them to okay for me to go on, um, I, I was working myself up. I didn't know like who the people were on board. Like I know that they had become comfortable with the cameras ready. I didn't really know how I was going to deal with that. So I was really nervous going in and then realizing that everybody was there for three weeks before me and they all had their friendships built and I didn't know the circumstances that I was coming into with Camille being fired. I had no clue, like, who was there before me or anything like that. I didn't know if somebody had left, somebody had been fired. Um, so it was, I was all, I was in the dark for most of it. And um, definitely coming in, I could see that there, there was definitely, like, little clicks, you know. And um, I must say, especially on the interior, Haley and Fraser, everybody loves them. I love them possibly even more if that's possible. Um, <laughs> they, they made that experience so much easier for me. They didn't for a second, like see me as the outsider coming in. Um, they like included me as if I was there from week one and um, our friendships grew from there to the end of the show. And then after as well, I must say I speak to Haley a lot more um, who wouldn't? She's got such an amazing personality. <laughs> so infectious. Uh, Her energy is so infectious. It's actually a lot of fun watching. You two gave us some great moments on yeah. the show. I mean, with some <laughs> yeah. cake and, and everything else. But also, you continue to give us these great moments on social media. You two together would be, I think, just on its own, a great show. <laughs> yeah. It's quite sad that we live so far apart. But I mean, even today we were talking and she sent me like an eight and a half minute voice note and I sent the 10 minute voice note back. So we're, we're still keeping as close as we possibly can. Those, that's one of those that. things that I think everyone who watches the show um, would be so happy to hear because definitely like, and, and that's one of my notes that I made, like, cause I want to ask you particularly about your friendship with Haley, because you guys almost became like this comedy duo that we kept <laughs> checking in with throughout the, the right. season. And it brought like, I don't know. To me, I think the thing I liked was you guys are both completely competent at your jobs. You're also, you guys both seem passionate about what you're doing, but then you were also likable and fun, which is like such a winning combo that sadly doesn't happen all the time on below deck. Yeah. I guess, I guess that's good for television. Um, yeah. But... <laughs> that's exactly what I said. People have asked me about like specific people on the show. And I was like, first of all, I didn't really work with the two people that left. Yeah. Um, but it's entertaining. As much oh, drama yeah. as there was, it's entertaining. And that's what people are there to do. They're here to be entertained. Exactly. 100%. That's something that Jason and I talk about a lot. Is like, as much as like those people, like I wouldn't want to be in that situation with them in real life. And I wouldn't want to be working <laughs> yeah. alongside them. But boy, is it great TV, you know? So right, yeah. in a way, <laughs> you kind of hope I mean, there's you, a villain. I watched the episodes before I got there. I was in... Even I didn't even really get a chance to talk to anybody about like anything that happened before I got there. So while everybody else was watching those first couple of episodes that I wasn't there for, I was living everything with the audience as well. And I was finding out things and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so amazing. <laughs> when you were waiting in the hotel, like, so what's sort of the process? Do they have a few people waiting while filming is going on in case they need to bring you on? Or were you called 48 hours before you were going to be on the boat? And are they telling you you're replacing someone? Like, what do you know? And how long do you know it? Like, when you're coming on? So I was supposed to fly out in the beginning. And then there was going to be still some more casting choices made from there. 
And unfortunately, out of Miami, we were having bad weather. I missed a couple of flights. And then when I could get on my flight, the airport was super busy and I missed that one. So they said, okay, just hang back. Um, we'll give you a call if we need you. And so I stayed on the boat that I was on. We went up to Savannah, Georgia, and I was living life as if nothing was happening because I didn't expect anything to happen. And I think it was 6 p.m. on like a Friday night or something. We were, I had gotten ready for a night out. We were going to have like dinner and drinks and we we're going to go out afterwards. And I got this phone call and I, I saw the number and I just started crying because I was, <laughs> I, was so, I was so overwhelmed and I didn't expect it. And I had obviously just started like a relationship. And so everything happened very quickly all at once. And they called me and they're like, hey, so your flight is tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Wow. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, wow. So 12 hours. And at that time, the boat that I was on was coming out of the water to go into the dry dock. So I wasn't able to get onto the boat until about like 10 p.m. that night. And then I had to pack all my stuff up, get to bed, and then still get to the airport by what, like 4 a.m. Wow. So it was a very um, intense couple of hours. And then they flew me. I had to fly to Atlanta first to get a COVID test. And then the following day, I flew out of Atlanta to St. Lucia. And then I stayed in the hotel for one night before I got onto the boat. So it was definitely oh, wow. a process of, of getting there and getting onto the boat. There's like no time to even like, I mean, did you even have time to explain to the person you started a relationship with? Hey, gotta go. <laughs> like, what was that? Yeah, like? not, so I, I had spoken about the fact that I had interviewed for the show and what happened that I didn't really make it out. And then I got the news and then I called and there was like tears on the phone because he knew as well what was going on. Oh, and so um, yeah, so it was, it was a, a very emotional couple of days, but um, I wouldn't give it up for the world though. I loved my experience on the show and I would definitely do it again. That's amazing. You know, you brought something really, really special to the show as well. Uh, something that I don't think, you know, it's, it's not often talked about. It's, it's not like, you know, we've never seen a gay stew on the show before, but I feel like everyone's story is so different. And at, some yeah. point during the show you decided that you wanted to share who you were with your family what because i've been there <laughs> you know and and i also come from a very religious family what made you want to do this on international television to to literally say you know what i want to call my family right now did was it because you had support on the boat or is it something you just wanted to to really get out so to be honest, I, I don't really ever think that the thought of international TV went through my head at that moment. Um, I, you know, I had all the support from, from Haley a lot and from Rachel and from Fraser with his own story. And I think in that moment, I, I felt so calm in myself and I had so much confidence in who I was that I didn't want that to go away. So I thought like, you know, it, it probably wasn't the best thing to do it over the phone, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it felt right to me in the moment. So that is what I went with. And obviously things turned out different. I didn't end up doing it in that moment, but it was, I, yeah, I think it was just that feeling of calm and confidence in myself and who I am that I thought, okay, well, it's it's now or never. Yeah. And, um, well, luckily, it's not never. So, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, also the the looming aspect of international TV, it the the show eventually that, comes that's out. That's what I was gonna I, say. Yeah. It gave me a timeline, and I was like, okay, great. You know, it it's otherwise I don't know like when it would have happened. You know, so. It's sorry. Sorry. I, it's just so I, I really I commend you for that. I commend Fraser for sharing his story, too. I think the more people talk about that, it makes it a lot easier for someone watching. They can they can. It's almost like they look up as an example. It's like, OK, you had the courage to do this. Fraser had the courage to do this. And and the more stories I think that we have like that it just makes it easier for maybe a, someone in a similar position as you were growing up, you know, if you were watching TV and this was happening. So uh, bravo. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've said it before. I think 
you know, I, I've been through a, a lot of things in life that have made me super emotional. And um, if there is one thing that can possibly come out of the sh- of me doing the show, is that if somebody can feel confident about being themselves, I think that's that's the most important thing. Besides for even like like coming out in in general, the show has given me so much confidence in myself and just having a, having a good response, especially from the audience has been like, okay, I don't have to be so insecure about this or that. And so in, in turn, if I can help somebody gain confidence because the show has helped me so much, that's incredible. That's awesome. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. It's um, I think it's great. I, obviously this isn't a, something that, that I have in common with the two of you and I've not gone through it, but in a way I kind of did alongside Jason cause we've been friends and, and um, Jason came out during our friendship and stuff. And so it was, yeah. it was touching. And so when I see those moments, I, I just remember some of the anxiety Jason had and stuff. And, um, and, you know, like you like he mentioned, you know, his family is religious and stuff. And so I think there's a lot of similarities between the two of you where it's like, um, that's tough. Yeah. And so I, I look at it as like, you know, some people talk about, oh, you know, Tyler choosing to call his family at that time. That was a big moment. But I was like, I, in response to what you said earlier, I was like, no, him choosing to do the television show and be open about it was really him coming out, you know, yeah, because th- that's that's a big choice to come on and share that because you could have not shared it. It's not like you have to date someone on the show or you have to yeah. hook up. like you could have just been, oh, there's Tyler and. He doesn't mention anything about relationships and, you know. Yeah. And I think also like having started that new relationship and I had, um, I had spoken to my sister about it before I joined the show as well. So that was a really, she, she's great. She's so loving. She's so supportive. So having that support already before going onto the show from a family member, I think made it just that much easier to, to talk about it and be comfortable on the show. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, uh, Tyler, thank you for sharing that with us because that's I know that's a, like a big that's a big thing, and and I appreciate you doing that. But I have to ask you a more like Bravo question, okay? Yeah. Um, you came on to a season where it we have we've never had two captains, so yeah. like one fill in besides I guess Captain Sean for like one episode, right? We had <laughs> yeah. two captains really at the helm of Motoyot St. David. You came in with Captain Sandy. You finished with Captain Lee. It's Captain Lee's final season on the show. What a privilege as well to be what part of a, that. Yeah, absolutely. And to work with like two of the most, you know, famous captains on, on Bravo, right? Yeah. If you could work with one of them again, which one would it be? With, without disrespect to the other... I would have to say um, Captain Sandy. I think, you know, obviously her and I have similarities in, in like personal life, but she's also very similar to a lot of captains I've worked with personally. Um, on the younger side, at least compared to Captain Lee, very involved with what the crew is doing. I've always had very hands-on captains and I respond really well to her style of management. And I think her and I got along really well. I recently saw her in Florida. Um, it was great to see her. So I would definitely love to work with her again. Wow. I yeah. Mean, the- it's, some people talk about uh, the viewers, I, I will say. Some people are divided about her style of management. Like some say she's too hands on or something. But from actually being on her crew, like what is it that you appreciate about it? Or like do you, do you ever find that style? overbearing personally i think i would respond well to a captain like her like i i see the show and i go oh i think she's great and but some people are just have this knee-jerk reaction like no you know so i'm just curious what what your thoughts are about that and stuff i mean coming from yachting in general it is a captain's job to be involved in absolutely everything that happens on board so what people don't understand is the captains are responsible for everything and anything that happens on board. If you get a small cut in your finger and something happens and that escalates, if you haven't reported that to the captain and they haven't taken their necessary precautions to do everything, 
they can be liable for everything. So a hands-on style is, in my opinion, the best style for a captain to be. And, you know, she, she gets involved with the crew. She gets to know the crew and understand the relationships kind of that we all have together. And she almost becomes like a friend where it's much easier to go to her if you do have an issue. Whereas a captain that kind of takes a step back, it almost puts them on like a pedestal above everybody else. It's like, I don't interact with you very much. We don't know each other. It's very much like the CEO and the office worker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, All right, man, I can understand that. I can totally understand that. And the, another kind of like monumental moment for Below Deck that you were there for was for Fraser's initial time, at least on the show, as Chief Stew. And so um, that's something that we got to watch, you know, from episode one through. And yeah. I will say, at least from our point of view, we definitely saw the growth and the the struggles of, you know, stepping into leadership and those kind of natural challenges you're going to face, you know, regardless. And then also being on a television show. Um, yeah. how, how did you feel working with Fraser and kind of being there for a lot of that, you know, transition for him into that role? Yeah. To be honest, I thought Fraser was a great chief stew. What you don't see obviously on the show, because they have very limited amount of time to kind of show what happens over like three days and maybe one or two episodes Every time he saw one of us do something that he appreciated, he would call out, call it out over the radio and say, well done on doing this so well. Thank you. You're doing a really good job. He, he affirmed everything that we did so much and so well. It gave us so much confidence in the job that we were doing. And then I think in help, we could in turn, we could be better to help him. Mm -hmm. So I think when when I got there, he that was from day one. So I think he was already a strong chief too. I think maybe he just needed to get more comfortable with the role, which he absolutely did by the time we finished filming the show. Yeah, well, and it I think showed too, too. Well, and I think too, he needed a team that was supporting him as well. A captain's only as, as, as good as their crew, you know? And so yeah. I think having you and Haley as his team now, by the end there, like you guys also cared about your job it seemed and, and cared about delivering um you know quality service to the guests and stuff so it, it just seemed very in line with the kind of guy he was and, and what he yeah. wanted to achieve and so it just i think that actually helped and um yeah it was it was fun to see it was it was great to see the interior crew doing so well by the end because that's what yeah. everybody wanted you know so it so felt many people, really good as well yo i bet I, I, you know, Tyler, so many people don't realize this is only filmed for like six weeks. Yeah. Right. Like such a it, short amount of time. it's such a short amount of time and we're sitting here and we're, as viewers, we're watching like relationships, like come together, relationships come apart, you know, a lot of drama that happens, but it's so quick. Does it feel, does it feel that quick when it's happening? Um, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> does it feel like time is just like taking, like, what does that but feel I, like? By the end of it, it was like, okay, wow, that was quick. But in, yeah. in the moment, things really drag on, especially because you're tired. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you're working like 16, sometimes 18 hour days to get the job done. And, you know, we, we could have clocked off earlier, but obviously we all want to get the job done well, not just done. Yeah. So that time really does drag on. And then sometimes it almost does feel like a mission to have to, go out at night and like enjoy yourself and have a drink when all you really <laughs> want to do is sleep. Um, and I think we saw that with Alyssa as well. She really didn't want to go to that volleyball game. She just wanted to sleep. And I, I felt that obviously I hadn't been there for as long as everybody else. So it's probably a lot easier for me than it was for them. Um, but definitely like it's such a short amount of time and so much does happen, but I think it's, it's obviously escalated by, you live and work together from day one. So already you, you've gone from strangers to like family within minutes. Yeah. yeah. So everything does escalate really quickly and the relationships escalate very quickly. 
Well, and I could see, I could see what you mean by it dragging. Cause for example, like a dinner that might take three hours in real life on the show is like a five minute segment and it's <laughs> edited fast, but it's like, Oh no, they've been waiting on these people for three hours. For yeah. example, you know, so I could see how, you know, without the magic of editing, life can be kind of slow. At times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, obviously they're going to only put the, the fun, exciting parts in, you know, when, when it does lull for a bit and we're all just kind of eating and that kind of stuff, they don't need to put that in, but it really is such a shortened version of what we live through. Yeah. Yeah. And it's already short, you know, that six weeks yeah, exactly. is already short. Okay. Without giving any like spoilers or anything away, would you ever go back and do that experience again? And do you think we'd ever see you on our screens again? Um, without a doubt, I would go back. I, as difficult as the experience was, I would love to, to do it all again and, ex you know, be there from kind of day one. Cause I think it would be a completely different experience for me to be yeah. there the whole time as opposed to coming halfway. Um, at the moment, I can't say if I'm, gonna be on at least a bravo screen um anytime soon i'm hoping i am but you i would like to say you definitely haven't seen the last of me um but that remains to be seen Love tyler uh, having done the experience and you know having that desire in the past to do production and stuff getting to see some of the you know production side as you're filming and stuff was there anything that kind of sparked your interest? Like, oh, I actually would like to explore that more or something after doing the, you know, not just in front of the camera, but like, was there anything that kind of, you know, caught your eye or anything from doing the experience? Yeah, definitely. I think kind of when we went back for those um, additional confessionals, mm -hmm. seeing the whole like green screen set up there in the studio and like all the, the camera sound, the lights, everything, that really piqued an interest for me to... I've, I've always been interested in like the post-production kind of editing part as much as I have been um, to be in front of the camera. I, I did, I was a drama kid for like my entire life at school. Um, so I definitely do enjoy that theatrical aspect, but definitely post-production, the editing, um, all that kind of stuff really has like peaked in interest for me. That's awesome. You, after a while, you know, on the show, I, I will say that you guys do come off as, um, not playing to the camera so much. Like you guys do seem to forget the cameras are there or something. Yeah. Um, is that true just from being in front of them so long? Or are you always in the back of your head? Like there's a camera right there. Don't pick <laughs> my nose. <laughs> or whatever. I think, you know what? Less so if there's a camera right there and more, I always have my mic on. Oh, yes. Oh yeah. Great so point. And even if you cover your mic and whisper to somebody, they can still hear you. <laughs> so you really have to be careful what you say. And I think as much as you do almost forget that the camera is there, you're always aware of it. You know, I mean, it's the same as if somebody pulls up their phone camera and like puts it on you. You can have a normal conversation, but you're always aware that it's there. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want people to get upset by any like opinions you have. So that is always going through through your head. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if that was going through Ben and Camille's head at all. Because um, we, got, we got to watch a lot of action <laughs> on cable television. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it may have been easier for some people to let go than others. Yeah. <laughs> some people are into it. You know? <laughs> hey, to each their own. Tyler, yeah. I, my last question for you is, out of everybody... And I'm, I'm pretty sure I already know the answer, but out of everyone that you met during this experience, who is the one person, the one relationship, the one friendship that you are, that are you, you're holding the closest to you at this, uh, at this I mean, point? I think the, the answer is probably pretty obvious. It has to be Haley. Um, we, we talk almost every day still we have for like the past year. Um, we were obviously in New York together as well recently. And that was one of the best weeks I've had in a very, very long time. Um, so you'll definitely be seeing more of Haley and I together, um, whether it's with Bravo or not. Um, we definitely have some things in the works behind the scenes that will hopefully come to fruition later in the year. Amazing. Well, Tyler, Amazing. If, 
you know, when this comes and you, if you guys are looking for a place to share the news, by all means, you guys are welcome back. You guys You're were right here. So anytime. Anytime. And yeah, you guys were loved by everyone who watches the, our show and by us. And yeah, I just, one of my most liked tweets, funny enough, was I just happened to mention, I was like, Hey, I would love to see these two back on, like on another season. I feel like we were just getting started. Um, and a lot, I mean, only positive responses back. Like everybody was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I keep getting the notifications for that tweet and I'm like, yes, like that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> How was it really quick? Like being in New York and, and meeting other, cause I saw, I saw on your social media, you were meeting a lot of other people from other franchises like to me oh, and yeah. Kyle and, and, and how was that? And do you guys relate on a lot of levels it, besides yeah, Yachty, maybe, I guess you guys are filming I think, and stuff. Yeah, although, I mean, none of us had really met before, kind of going through the experience of Below Deck and being on camera and all kind of having a very similar experience in front of the camera, um, it builds a bond that wouldn't really be there with somebody else that you just meet. So we all like kind of clicked immediately and we were just like, we had an understanding of each other. I'm That's sure it's amazing. like it's like military vets meeting each other. Like we didn't serve exactly. together, but we yeah, <laughs> we, we boot camp and we can share those stories. Yeah, yeah. I, I that's great. And um, oh, I also too like I know um, BravoCon is a thing. Is there any talk of like you going to BravoCon or anything like that, or is that something you're thinking about? Or nothing I've heard yet. I actually haven't thought of BravoCon. Um, it would be amazing to go just to have the experience of meeting a whole bunch of like fans and everything and people who are who just love the show um i would love to have that experience um it's not on the horizon yet but we'll see i yeah i hope so because it is it is such a fun freaking time like have you i wasn't so sure yeah I, I just went this yeah. past year and i didn't want i necessarily didn't want to go but we had to go and when i got yeah. there and started like meeting people and just the energy by itself is just so addictive it's so fun um yeah. You know, a lot of the housewives talk about this sisterhood that they're they form, you know, doing the show and they meet different housewives from different franchises and stuff. And I almost feel like on Below Deck, we we meet crew members, we lose them because, you know, you guys have real jobs and stuff, too. And you you go on to different charters and different opportunities. But yeah. I feel like almost, you know, I, when I see Kyle and, and Toomey and Chef Dave and and you and Haley and and when you guys get together at events, I almost feel like you guys are forming your own kind of group. And I really, this is a group of people that I would love to see more of. Everyone you were hanging out with, I hope we get to see, I hope we get the opportunity to see you guys back on the screen because I think it's it's much needed. You guys bring a great energy, a great yeah. energy. What I think would be a great idea is to like have a, a whole season of just people that have been brought back who have been on the show already, yeah. I yes. think would be such an interesting dynamic. Yeah, yes. and mix up the franchises, you know, because we yeah. see someone sailing in Mediterranean stuff. It, it would be fun, like, or like almost if Bravo did like a, an all star thing and let people vote yeah. and like, let's fill two ships full of crew and then <laughs> we'll do two seasons or something. You know, like, exactly, I think yeah. that'd be so great for ratings. Like, why not? <laughs> You know who I'd love to work with, though, is Aisha. She oh, seems yeah. incredible, and I've spoken to her a little bit. Her and Haley uh, have gotten to know each other quite well. So when I was in New York, we kind of all, like, spoke spoke amongst each other. Um, she seems like such an incredible person, and I know she's doing um, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, the Australian one, which is somewhere in Africa. I'm not exactly sure where, but it would be such an amazing opportunity to just even, like, meet her if she's around. That, that would be so fun. I would, you guys, you have to document that if that happens. We have to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, I have to say, we really appreciate you coming here, kind of sharing your stories with us. Um, again, Josh and I don't do interviews, but yeah. we knew because we just enjoyed you so much on the show. If we could yeah. have the opportunity to get on here, we didn't want to have you like call into the live show. We actually wanted the, the, the time and opportunity to speak with you in a, in a, in a, in a panel like this. So yeah. we really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. I really do appreciate it. It's, it's great to like, just, you know, have like a regular conversation with people and then kind of have that broadcast as, as opposed to something 
that's like super prepared and like you're really nervous for this really just felt comfortable to me uh well we pre it was so funny because josh and i were talking right before and we're like um because i was like you know i'm I'm writing down some questions that i want to ask tyler and he's like yeah yeah we'll talk in the morning we'll put it together five minutes before we get out i'm like did you write questions and i'm like no did you write questions he's like no but we know what we want to talk to you about so yeah it it just made it a lot easier and and again we really appreciate it you know the same to what you were saying tyler like i i didn't want to feel i wanted to be more organic like oh he mentioned this let's go let's walk down that path with him or you know like i i had a i have a highlight here of like just moments i wanted to touch on like oh before we go i just gotta say obviously the cake moment that cake fight with (laughs) you You had, you had mentioned to me, we were, you and I were messaging on Instagram and you had mentioned like, Hey, Haley and I have this funny moment coming Yeah, we should chat afterwards. And you know what it's funny is I thought because it was like an episode before or something you had mentioned, Hey, there's a funny moment coming. And it was when you two got caught in the room. Oh God. Of the I forgot party. about that for a second. And so that's the funny thing is I thought that was it. And I was like, Oh, that was funny. And then a few episodes later, the cake happened. And I was like, okay, that is what I think Tyler was referring yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a great moment. Look, I don't remember a lot of it, unfortunately. <laughs> but it was great to see you back and be like, okay, that's how we got into, like, such a mess. Well, and I knew that you were really gone because you seem so OCD about cleaning. The fact that you went and passed out <laughs> with a cake mess all over the galley. I was like, oh, oh he is definitely three sheets to the wind if he's not <laughs> yeah. and Tyler is gone so uh, but what a great moment though I think it I had to laugh at myself and Haley as well and even like that last episode with where I blew up the condom and was like whacking her with it. <laughs> and um, that line is ingrained in my head where she says the power of Christ compels you oh my god <laughs> yeah I well and for us I think it was just like you know, it's it's always fun to see friends goofing with each other. Like yeah. Jason and I, we constantly make fun of each other, but I feel like that's our way of showing like affection and that we're f- comfortable with each other. Like, obviously, I'm saying this, I don't really mean it, or I, you know, I wouldn't say this to someone I don't know or something. Yeah. Like that. And so, yeah, just seeing you two just goof off together and stuff like that's another thing I think kind of made me feel like, oh, I would definitely be friends with him because yeah. Yeah. And this was Probably the turnaround, you know, I, I don't mean to keep talking, but this was the turnaround. It's like, we had all this chaos that did the whole season and we had all this like, you know, very uncomfortable situations and stuff like that. And then you guys made the last, you know, few episodes so enjoyable. We were laughing at our TVs. We were sitting here enjoying these moments with you. So that's, yeah, you brought a lot of light. I think you all did, especially at the end there. So yeah, Tyler, you were positioned well to be the like knight in shining armor who comes yeah. in after a couple months. <laughs> I was like, if there's ever been a way to come on to the show, you had one of the best um, <laughs> ways to come I'm glad on. I so. made a good impression. Hopefully, um, it pays off. Yeah, well, we it has. So. I mean, everyone loves you and definitely wants to see more of you. So when I'm not even gonna say if when you and Haley get your project going. Yeah, we'll bring the two of you on. We'll all make fun of each other, and we'll let you guys <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you guys share what it is and get everyone excited about it. Amazing, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. We appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, that was Tyler Walker from season ten of Below Deck. Josh, that was such, he's such a gem, man. Like, what a good a cool guy. He like I expected him to be awesome. Thank goodness he was. That would, <laughs> I would have been so heartbroken if he wasn't who we were expecting, but. I think on the show, we got plenty of time to see what kind of guy he was. And yeah, he lived, he was true to his uh, word or his expectation. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I couldn't agree with you more. And hopefully we see more of him on our screens. And Josh, what do we have coming up tomorrow night? Oh my gosh. Our spring break is ending, Jason. Our We've been off a couple of is- weeks. Tomorrow night, we are back with the premiere of Below Deck Sailing. Our sailing yes. team is back, so this is going to be exciting. This is exciting. It looks like they're they're in Sardinia. They it it looks amazing. We have all our familiar faces, the ones that we love to talk about. We have a lot of new drama and new things going on. So we'll be back tomorrow at eleven p.m. Eastern, uh, eight p.m. Pacific to go back into Anchor Watch and go on another journey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we better get some rest. We got we got a show tomorrow, so. We got a show tomorrow. All right, guys, thanks for joining us for our interview, and we will see you all on Anchor Watch.